Hey everybody, good morning. We're taking a look today at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, and we see that uh, this is uh, Samuel's message to the people um, during Saul's uh, coronation when they're making him king. And, you know, he gives this great message, and, and at the end of it, and these are, these are the verses I want to talk about is the last two verses here. Uh, starting in 24, it says, Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. And he he gives uh, uh, good to, good commands here. He says it's, first he starts off with only fear the Lord. Listen, when you fear the Lord, that that, that isn't a fear uh, that is a bad fear. It's a good fear. It means that you revere the Lord, that you lift him up, that you see him as God, that you see him as king, that you see him as for his glory in who he really is. You know, the Bible says that he holds the earth in the palm of his hand. You know, that means that no matter where you go, no matter how far you fall on this earth, you're still in the hand of God. And you're not going to get out of that. So we need to, to look at God for who he is, how big and how great he really is, that you can't outrun this God. You can't, out, you can't hide from him. You can't escape, and who would want to? He says, only fear the Lord and serve him with truth in all of your heart. And I remember the other day in church, we were talking about Matthew 5 and the Beatitudes, and I remember the Lord had me circle one of them. It says, blessed are the pure in heart. This is uh, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, in here it says, Samuel is saying, serve him in truth with all your heart, okay? Don't let the motives of this world or, or any other motive push you to serve in any other way than how God has destined you to serve. Listen, if you serve God with the attitude of serving God to see his kingdom expand and grow and mature then you're doing it right. But if you're serving God because you think you want to make money or because you think you want an easy job or because you think it's just the right thing to do or you think it's going to score you some brownie points, that's not serving God with all your heart and that's not pure in heart and you may not see God. God says serve him with a pure heart and you shall see God. He says, for consider what great things he has done for you. Okay, sometimes you need to testify to yourself of the goodness of God and what he's done in your life. And when you testify to others, it lifts them up and it gives them hope for what he can do in their lives. So we need to testify. We need to remember where he has brought us from. We need to remember the trials he has brought us through. We need to remember these things. And we need, we need to do it often. So that we can continue to look at him with that fear that we ought to have. And then he says, and he gives a warning, but if you still do wickedly, if you go through all of these here, if you live your life this way and you still do wickedly, he says, you shall be swept away. He says, both you and your king. So what he is saying is that he will destroy you, you, you know, for... The, the promises in my life that he has given me through his word was Jeremiah 12, 16. But in Jeremiah 12, 17, he says, if you don't, I will utterly destroy you. You see, that is not what God wants. But he is a holy God. And he can react no other way to sin except to spew fire at it. That's the only way he can react to sin. And if that is how you're living your life, what is left when the, when the fire of the Holy Spirit burns away all that sin? What is left? Both you and your king. He says it doesn't matter. It does not matter who you are on this earth. You have to, we, we have to live by his statutes. We have to honor him. We have to fear him because it doesn't matter if you're a president. It doesn't matter if you're a CEO of a company. It doesn't matter if you're the richest person on earth. We still have to do these things. It's 
what we're called to do. He created us all with a desire and a purpose to love us. And if we don't love him back in a way that he can respond, how should he feel? How would you feel? How do you feel when you love somebody and they don't respond to that love in a way that you understand? Have a super day, guys. I love you all.